is taught. Hello there, just so you know, this video contains a paid promotion. Don't worry, I'll never promote something that I don't think is worthwhile, and I'll never mislead you about the quality of a product or service. Enjoy! Hello everybody and welcome back to TipTut. Today we're taking a look at particle based motion graphics. This is really cool. Um, you saw in the intro there, 99% of that was made with a particle engine, which is kind of crazy. Um, it's an engine called Stardust uh, and it's basically a new node based particle system that allows you to create uh, motion graphics, 2D, 3D particles. It basically does whatever you want. But the real thing that I want to focus on is the motion graphics side of it because that's what we do here. We do 2D stuff and it's really cool. I don't really know of another particle engine that can do this. So I'm just going to dive right in. Uh, this is, I'm going to say now, a little bit more of an advanced tutorial. I'm not going to be covering the basics of After Effects here. If you do want that, head on over to my intro to motion graphics or intro to infographics in motion series um, and start there, then come back and watch this because it's really cool and you'll be impressed, hopefully. <laughs> you'll be impressed with the engine, maybe not with my motion graphics. Who knows? Let's do it. Uh, I'm going to create a new composition here. And it's going to be 1280 by 720 at 25 frames per second. Just going to do that because I'm also rendering and recording my screen and everything whilst I try and do this. I'm not sure my computer could handle it. Um, so I'm just going to create a new solid as a background layer. And I'm just going to call this background. Now, the way um, Stardust works is, like I said, it's a node based particle system. So you actually get a really cool node interface to work with. Uh, and those nodes represent the controls on the particles. So each um, iteration of Stardust can have as many particle engines as you want within reason, obviously. Um, and each of those can sit on one solid layer or on an individual solid layer. It's up to you. Um, so I'm going to create a new solid and call this Stardust. OK, and um, we're going to take a look at creating the uh, kind of hex background that we've got here uh, to start with, at least. So um, I'm going to apply Stardust to our solid in the same way that we apply a normal particle engine to a solid. Um, like so. When you first boot up a copy of Stardust, you'll have this basic um, particle based animation here, which is its sort of bog standard entry level emitter, essentially. Um, and you can see that we have two panels now which are worthy of note. There is one which is the Stardust panel, which has different nodes that represent the different parts of the animation. And we have our effects controls open, which is where we actually control what the emitter does, what the particles look like, etc. OK, now Let's click on our emitter and you can see that it automatically switches to the emitter within the effects controls. And if you click on the particle, it does the same thing. Now, this is really basic, but what you can do is just iterate and iterate and increase on this by adding all sorts of different effects. Um, you can see we've got things like uh, force. So you can add wind and gravity and things like that. Uh, turbulence. So you can add a field of movement to your particles. Uh, you can add a field, which is quite cool. Imagine you have a emitter emitting some particles. You can push a force field like object object through it. So a sphere or a rectangle or an object that you've mapped um, through your particles and they will respond and sort of retreat away from that object, which is quite cool. We're going to do something that at the end of this tutorial. Uh, you can replica, uh, which basically creates uh, duplications of your particles uh, to the point where it could form, say, uh, a series of dot particles into a long line or string to make them uh, the look like they're a rope or something like that, um, which works really well for motion graphics. Um, and you can add additional controls, uh, additional motion and all sorts of shading and things, which we're not really going to touch upon because we do 2D stuff here. That is what we like. So first thing I'm going to do is create our hex background, which actually starts off as a preset. Now, usually I'm not a big fan of presets, but these ones are really great starting points because it's so easy to iterate on a preset and create your own work from uh, Stardust. These are really good places to start. Um, so I think it's under HUD. 
and then hive that is what we need so we have two options here replace or add uh, we want to choose replace because we want to get rid of this original particle system that we have here that we don't need anymore if we were to hit add it would add it on top of that particle system and we'd have a new series of nodes here that would represent this new hive animation so we're just going to hit replace to get rid of that one and you can see that's it we're done so thanks very much for watching everybody <laughs> no i'm kidding um it is quite simple but it's not that simple uh you can see that we have our hives here but they don't quite fill the screen Screen. they're a bit clustered together um, but that's fine if we were to hit play voila i mean that's a particle based animation right there um, you'll notice it's also dropped an additional composition called hexa into our main comp and i'll just explain what this does basically the particles that are used in this system come from this composition and come from the different frames of this composition okay so it uses this comp as the particle for the main system, which is really cool. So that could be changed, edited, however you want. You could turn it into a pentagon, you could change the colors, etc., etc. We're, what we're going to do is just adjust some of the simple settings like the positioning and the radius of the emitter so that we can get it to fill the screen properly. Okay, now that is the one we need. So we'll just rename uh, comp so that we know we're not getting confused to main tut for tutorial um, and let's start editing our first particles which is really exciting so you can see that we have our emitter here if i click it in the node window it brings it up here which gets really useful when it gets complicated later on you can see that we've got all sorts of intimidating controls here uh, particles per second origin xy uh, speed size angle orient we'll go into pretty much all of these over the course of the tutorial but just to get started uh, I'm just going to show you how to sort of change a few things. Um, so we're going to increase the size X. Now, this isn't the particle. Remember, this is the emitter. Uh, if we wanted to increase the size of the particles, we'd go down to the particle node and edit that one. OK, so on the emitter, we just want to increase this until it fills our screen. Lovely. OK, I'm going to increase the Y a little bit as well. So they're not so clustered. And I think we'll leave it at that. That's perfect for me. That's all that I want for now. But it's a bit uh, bland and boring at the moment because we haven't really got anything for it to uh, animate to. So we're going to drop some music in. OK, just going to hit U to collapse that and bring in this file here and hit L twice to bring up our waveform. OK. So you can see that about three and a half seconds in, we've got a really cool kick that drops in. And in the original one, you can notice that we've got the word tipped up that just grows uh, a little bit over time uh, and shakes more and more. Now, I will say at this moment, um, obviously, you don't have to copy me doing this. I always recommend that you do your own thing. Um, I am going to recreate what you saw in the beginning because that's what you saw in the beginning. Um, but these techniques can be applied to any and all motion graphics that you want. It's completely up to you. Um, do try and follow along a little bit if you want to because you might learn some cool tricks but uh, if you don't want to if you want to just use this as a starting point go ahead that's what we're here for cool so we're happy with this sort of little animation it's a very basic um start to our particle systems so i'm just going to quickly do the other bit of animation which isn't particle based and i'll just breeze through that so we're going to need the word tipped up okay we're going to need it above our solids and I'm just going to quickly use motion V2 to center this anchor point, And I'm going to align it to the center of the screen. OK, uh, we now want to add a little bit of a wiggle to it. But we want the wiggle to grow over time. So unfortunately, just typing wiggle 150 like we usually do isn't going to work. We need to tie it to some sliders. Um, so I'm going to do that now. We can go up to our effects window, expression controls, and choose slider control. And I'm just going to duplicate that. I'm going to call one of them freak for frequency and one of them int for intensity. Uh, and then I'm just going to do a little quick bit of coding down here. OK, so we're going to define two variables. One variable is going to be called frequency. And we're going to set frequency to be the value of slider and close off that line with a semicolon. OK, we're then going to create a new variable called int and set that value to be the value of the int slider and close that off with a semicolon. Then the last thing we need to do is go down to our wiggle values and set the wiggle values to be frequency and intensity. And what this will do is it means it allows us to control the values of what usually would be just numbers in here by the values of this slider. So what I can do is set them to start at zero, zero. And then as soon as the kick comes in, we can be at maybe 50, 50, 50, 50. 
and you can see that over time the wiggle increases bam then as soon as the kick comes in i want this to drop out of existence now like i said you can put multiple additions of a stardust particle on the same solid but because i know i'm done with this one forever i'm just going to close it off uh and start with a new solid just because it's a bit neater um However, you can have as many iterations of a Stardust um, emitter, node, whatever you want to call it, uh, on the same solid, within reason, whatever your computer can handle. Um, I'm just going to drop this little comp down here, so because I, I know I don't need that as well. And I'm going to close off that so we've got a bit of room to work with. Okay, let's take a look at what we've done. A masterpiece <laughs> already. Uh, okay, let's have a look at what's coming up next. So... Wow, okay, a lot going on in that first second already. You can see that we've got some lines that dash across the screen. We've got a circular-based particle system in the background. We've got a little animation of a circle in the middle, and then we've got some lines that dash and jump and spin across the middle of the screen as well. Now, every single thing you see in this part of the animation, except for the little blue circle, is particles. Even those lines, even those uh, spins dashing across the screen there, it's all done via a particle engine, which to me is pretty damn cool. Um, so I'm going to basically explain to you now how to do all of that. Uh, this is going to get a little bit involved. So uh, grab a cup of tea, settle in for the long haul. OK, so let's tackle the uh, circular elements in the background first. I'm going to create a new solid. Uh, I'm going to call it circles and I'm going to position it to start at our keyframe when the kick comes in on the music, like so. Okay, let's apply Stardust to it. And this time we're gonna start with a preset uh, under replica called circular, like so, and hit replace. Okay, so now when we scrub along, you'll see that we've got a pretty crazy set of um, what look like lines, but are actually particles, which is pretty cool. Ah. So all of these sort of motion -y, graphic -y lines that you'd usually do with, you know, line trimming and start and end points and et cetera, et cetera, is all done via a particle engine. Uh, I don't know if it's just me, but that seems really cool. Um, so let's make it look a bit more like it's something of ours rather than a preset. Uh, and you can also notice now we've got a little bit of a more complicated, but not really, a particle system over here. We've now got an emitter that pushes the particles out. We've got a particle node that defines what they look like. And we've got a replica node, which basically, if we turned off, you'd see that all we've actually got is some particles that sploosh out a little bit. But when you turn this replica on, it duplicates all of them into a circle. So essentially we've got 41 replicants uh, like in Blade Runner, of uh, our particles, which are then offset on one of their z-axes so that they spin around. If I were to increase this, for example, you'd see exactly what's going on, okay? So let's just decrease that down to 4.6. And what it basically means is each one of these is offset so that it creates this kind of line of particles, which is really cool. So let's make it look something that looks like it should be in the scene a bit more, okay? I'm gonna close off Replica, and I'm gonna go to Particles, and I'm going to change the color first of all. So underneath particle properties, I'm going to scroll on down until I find color, which is here, particle color. You can see it's set to random from gradient. Now, if I twirl down color gradient, you'll see that we have a gradient. What this does is each particle randomly selects a color from this gradient and applies it to that particle. So if I were to remove some of these, you'll notice that they're now all yellow, okay? Um, but we can just choose solid color instead, um, or we can choose color over life. And if we go through a few of the presets here, like say, for example, this one, that's quite bold. You'll notice that when the particle is born, it's dark purple, and when it dies, it's white, which means that it's dark purple as they all start and then move to white as they die out, which is really cool. So have a play with that. What I'm gonna choose is random from gradient. And what I'm gonna do is just ditch some of these by dragging them off to the edges of the box. And I'm gonna create my own one. So on this left here, I'm gonna want my sunflower yellow from my tip tuck color palette. And on the right hand side over here, I'm gonna want my carrot color from the tip tuck color palette. And what this means is it's going to go through 
and select uh, from this gradient all the different colors. So it could be yellow or orange or any of the iterations in between. And you can see that now that it suits the frame a little bit more within our branding, which is really cool. Um, we can increase the life of the particles, which will make these lines a little bit longer, I think. Uh, like so basically means they live for a touch longer which is what i want um and if we wanted to we could decrease the life random so they all last exactly three seconds but i kind of like the fact that it's a little bit uh, sporadic and different so we're going to leave it there with the particles going to twirl that down but what we do want is this to increase in size a little bit so we need to go over to the emitter so let's grab our emitter uh node here and we're just going to increase um the origin z to bring it closer to the camera or to our lens there's not really a camera there let's see that looks about right um, and if we increase the speed you'll notice that that scatters the particles a little bit more so maybe that origin z is a bit high let's push that down a little bit more that looks good and let's see what it starts off like okay i'm feeling like these need to scatter a bit as they go through um, and the way you do that is by using things like the particle speed and inertia and things like that i'll always notice that the uh, mission point is off center so i can put that wherever i like but i'm going to put it bang in the middle of the frame or roughly it doesn't really matter let's do it 640 to uh what would it be 320 but you can also see that it's uh set to wiggle a little bit or whatever by these red controls meaning they're expressioned so i'm actually going to twirl down origin x y and see what's going on yep it's got a wiggle on it i don't want that wiggle i'm going to get rid of it i want it to be staying in the center of the frame okay so you can see that already we've created something completely different to what the original one was um just by adjusting a few controls okay so what i'm actually going to do is over time i'm going to get these to scatter and to get them to scatter i'm going to play with two controls down in replica okay so i'm just going to close off emitter and open up replica and we're going to choose the amount of replicants that there are i keep saying replicants like it's blade runner um and the density of those uh replicants so that we can adjust how far they scatter, how solid those lines are essentially. So when it first starts, I want it to be pretty solid. We'll start off there. Then after a little while, let's see when a nice kick is. Okay, so maybe on that from there, from the music, uh, we want them to start dissipating, okay? So I'm gonna create a keyframe there for replicates and a keyframe for density. And then maybe a bit further on, Maybe when that comes in. There, that little guitar. That's when we want them to be pretty much gone, I'm gonna say. So what we're gonna do here, I'm just gonna play with these to show you what they do. If I increase the replicants, okay, that basically increases the amount of copies that there are on the screen, which is fine, that's what we want. But then I'm gonna decrease the density of them. And what that does is decreases sort of, well, the density. Um, increases the gaps in between the particles yeah they're less dense so if i were to drag this all the way down you'll notice that it's very much looking like a particle engine now okay so we'll do that and we'll leave those keyframes there but what we'll also do is we'll go back to the first keyframe like so and we'll go back up to our emitter and we'll take our particles per second from 40 let's go past these keyframes by a second or two and put that down to zero now that's stopping them emitting from this point. There's still some on the screen because they're the leftovers of what's going on. Okay, but no more are being emitted. So they'll start to dissipate. Maybe we'll push that back just a little bit so that they're more in line with these particles, these keyframes here. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, not too bad. Maybe I'll make it just a bit quicker and a bit earlier so that the force feels like it's actually on the moment a bit more. There we go, that looks quite nice. Cool, so you can see that we've created a completely different effect there than we had from the first bit of the preset with not too much work. Um, let's close those down. Again, I'm gonna cap this off. If I wanted to, I could build another one on top, but I kind of like using different solids. Um, it really does work the way you want it to work. It's as simple as that. So I'll close off those keyframes. I know I'm happy with them. And I'll close off those keyframes. I know I'm happy with them. And let's see what that looks like. Got the shakes, got the hexes. 
All right, wicked. Happy with that to start with. Now, next thing I'm going to do is just quickly drop in my little circle, um, which isn't particle based, unfortunately. Uh, it is just a little circle that I've got here. Pop that in the middle of the screen. Start it there. And I'm just going to quickly add in a scale and rotation keyframe like so. Pop the scale down to zero on the first one. Put the spin up to two full rotations on the second keyframe. And then let's assist those with some easy easing so that it spits out. Okay, nice. And then let's have it disappear again. Now, like I said, I'm sort of skipping through these bits a little bit because I kind of understand that you guys um, know how to keyframe things. <laughs> I'm not going to insult your intelligence at this point. Um, so we're just going to spin that back down to zero and zero. Um, and ease those out, like so, okay. Cool. Let's add in the rest of the fun particle stuff then. So first thing we need on the beat is these lines that dash across the screen like this. Okay, and this is actually really easy. Once again, let's create a new solid. We'll call this dash. Oops, should have renamed that when I made it dash like so and pop it there and create a new copy of stardust on that okay let's go to our presets go over to graphic elements this time and you can see that we've got under swoosh and splash we've got all sorts of different um dashing shape effects which are all built using particles even these cool ones here all right i'm going to need line grab those and hit replace and you'll notice that we've got lines that dash across the screen okay Shoo. Now, I'm going to drop down that and hit Control Shift Alt Y to create a null. And I'm going to apply the dash solid to that null. And then just quickly adjust the effects using this null object. OK, going to scale it down a little bit, increase the rotation, maybe 30 degrees. Oops, sorry, negative 30 degrees and see what that looks like. Not bad. Not bad at all. Maybe let's push it over a little bit more. Okay. Maybe we can just shimmy it across the screen. And let's see what we can do to make these particles look a little bit longer, shall we? Let's go to our swoosh and see what's going on here. Okay, so we have a type sphere that's emitting once at 100 particles a second. If we were to increase that, we have more lines. That looks quite cool. Let's add in a few more lines. Um, we have size X, size Y. That's going to increase the distance between the particles. I want them to be quite close together. Like so. OK, I'm happy with those. Let's see what they look like. Nice, they dash across. Perfect. Exactly what we need. Let's move on to the cool swish that goes across the screen like that. OK, just going to uh, create a new solid here. Control Y. And we're going to call this swooshes. And we're going to have it start. When is it going to start? Let's have it start on the blah, 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 of the guitar. OK, start the layer there with open square bracket and add a copy of Stardust. OK, let's go back into our graphical elements and into our swoosh and splashes. And let's take let's have the swirl. Is that a swirl tube? Let's have tube down the bottom uh, and let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that looks good to me. Perfect. OK, not exactly where or when we want it, though. Um, it's created at the beginning of the scene. So let's go over to where we want it. And I'm just going to pre-compose this just so that we don't have to worry about rendering all the other stuff while I'm trying to render this one little bit. And I'm going to call this um, tube. That's what it was called. Let's pop inside tube. Let's make it start where we want it to start and see what we're working with. All right, perfect. That looks pretty OK, actually, but let's make it a little bit more interesting. You can see it's quite simple. We've got a swoosh and we've got a particle. Um, let's change some of the particle settings to make it a little bit more personal to us. Um, it looks a bit chubby for my liking. Um, so let's drop that down a couple of pixels and then let's change it from a circle to a square or a rectangle. Ah, That thins out even more. Let's make it a bit fatter. Let's have it be 30. That looks all right. And let's have the size Y be 20. There we go. OK, so we're happy with that. 
uh, we're happy with our shape. We change it to a rectangle. That looks a bit better than a circle to me. Okay, so what else do we want to do? Let's change the swoosh. Let's increase the speed a little bit so that as they come in, these particles are going to form themselves a touch, I think. So let's go down to maybe 30, like so. And as they form, let's take the speed from 30 down to about nil. And what this does is it will create them uh, as if they're looking like they're forming into the tube as it comes down. There we go. Like so. Happy with that, I think. Actually, let's have it finish when it finishes so that it actually collects itself a lot sooner. Yeah, there we go. That looks quite good. I'm happy with that. Let's see what that looks like in our scene. Cool, that looks quite good. Um, but what I also want is them to be sort of still in the background when they're disappeared here. So you can see that it comes in from the right and then sort of disappears and then goes across again and disappears and goes across again. So what I'm going to do is duplicate this. I'm going to drop the opacity down to 50 on the one below. And then, oops, I'm going to flip it horizontally. Like so. And that way we get a little ghost version of the one before. And if I just push that along a little bit, coming out. Actually, no. Do you know what? No, I like that. I like the fact that they play catch up with each other. Ah. Yeah. Let's leave it like that. Okay, so let's add in a little triangle quickly. Okay, and let's have the little triangle come in when the man says, ah. <laughs> Pop that on the top. Like so. And I'm just going to copy these keyframes. Paste. There we go. And let's go to our ad. <laughs> and pop it there. Cool. Maybe have a start up a little bit earlier. Ah, now what's happened here is the center needs to be adjusted. So it's actually in the center of the triangle rather than the composition. There we go. Let's pop its position back in the middle. 320. Oops, no, sorry, 340. And that should look a little bit better. Yeah, there we go. Still needs to be a touch earlier, though, I feel. Yeah, happy with that. OK, let's pop it down. There we go. Um, and let's see what else, see what we've made so far. OK, I think that circle hangs around for a little bit too long, so let's shift those over. <laughs> OK, cool. Happy with that. What happens next in our original? We've missed out that second group of lines there. So what I'm actually going to do is just go through, find that first pack, which is here under dash. And I'm just going to duplicate that and find it again over here, just as the circle begins to disappear. And I'm going to push that along. And then what I'll do is duplicate this null as well and make the second dash apply to this null here. And we're going to rotate it the other way so that when those come through, they come in like that. Bam, like so. Let's have a look. <laughs> Let's have them come in on the broom. Let's have them come in just a little bit later. Cool. Happy with that. What's next then? Next up. Ah, next up, we've got this cool little kind of um, splosh animation here. You can see that we've got this really nice um, liquid blob with a trail of particles behind it. Um, so let's add one of those in. OK, go back to our main tutorial here. When does that come in roughly? 
just after the ad. Okay, ad. <laughs> let's go like so. And let's close off everything we've done so far. And because this is after that little vocal thing, I'm going to choose all of this as a red to imply this before it. And our new one, I'm going to make yellow so that I know it's after it. Let's push it to start there and add a Stardust layer. Okay, uh, let's go to graphical elements and let's choose swoosh and splash again. You can tell I love this folder. And we're gonna go for splash four, splash five, or splash six. Let's try splash six and hit replace. Okay, yeah, I quite like those. That's quite cool. Got the little trail of particles there as they come in. Let's put that up to full so we can see a bit better. Uh, trail of particles as those sort of bubble out from the shape. That's nice. Let's pre-compose this making sure that we move all of our attributes to the new composition and we'll call it bubbly. Let's pop it where we want it. Just after the ad. <laughs> and there we go. Nice one. And let's have a little bit of a play, see what we can do with these. Um, you can see that they're circles. Mm, let's have squares like we did last time. That's quite cool. Let's pop down to particle here, change them to rectangle, see what that looks like. Gonna have to increase the Y value again to make them a bit bigger. Let's push them a bit further, 41, 41. There we go, that looks quite cool. Let's also increase the opacity random a little bit so that they've got a bit of differentiation. That looks quite cool. And let's see what that looks like. Ah. Oh, I like that even more, perfect. Yeah, it looks much better with squares. I like it with squares a lot. Um, I also like the fact that because we increase the opacity a little bit, the trail kind of fades away a touch, which is quite nice. Where it's got the more solid shape, because all the particles overlap each other, um, it still looks solid because they sort of add up to 100, but the trail looks quite nice. We like that. Okay, great. Ah. Okay, so on that ad as well, we also want our particles to come in like so, okay? They creep in from the edge of the screen and then they sort of move around um, and cut holes in our uh, composition. Now, this is where it gets really heavy. I'm gonna push it to my computer's limits and see if it can handle it. But this is also where we create some particles from scratch. So everything that we've made so far has been um, part of a preset. But what we're gonna do this time is actually create something from scratch um, and Everything that it looks like is going to be something that we've built. So let's dive right into that after I have a quick cup of tea. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I've had my cup of tea. I'm feeling energized. I feel good. Let's dive right back in. Let's see what we've done so far. All right, not too shabby. Let's create the cutout effect that you saw in the original video then. Let's just go over to our first keyframe where we wanted to start and create a new solid. We'll call this one cutout. Uh, I'm gonna make it start at the beginning of the layer here and I'm gonna apply Stardust to it. Okay, now we have our standard emitter that we've created. If I just drag along a little bit, you'll see we actually have some particles, which is good to know. I'm just gonna cut it off there, go back to our keyframe, and start our layer so that we start with some particles, okay? Now, what I'm actually gonna do is build this up from scratch and show you how the node system here actually works, okay? So if I, um, first of all, try and cover this page with particles, okay, let's go with that. So we're gonna need to change the type from point to box, and what this does is gives us a square. If I turn the speed down to zero, you can see that we have a box shape of particles, and we're gonna increase the size X to cover our screen and the size Y to cover our screen. Oops, that is Z. Uh, size Y. There we go. Perfectly happy. I'm going to increase the particles per second to something crazy. Let's try 100,000. Wow, that completely fills the screen. So let's reduce it so it fills the screen but with the minimum amount of particles needed. Let's try 70,000. That still does it. 30,000. Like so. Perfect. 
Absolutely perfect. Okay, so we can see now that as soon as this layer pops in, we just have a solid white, which isn't what we want, but it is where we're going to start. Okay, and what we're going to do now is create a field that basically pushes those particles out of the way and then dances around the screen so that they all sort of pop back and zing back into shape. Okay, so the first thing we need to do now is actually add a node to our system. So if I go down here to the field node and just drag this onto our UI, you'll notice that immediately there's some kind of force acting against these particles, okay? Now, the way the node system works is, because this has no strings attached, it will affect absolutely everything in here. If we had five, six, seven different node fields in there, okay, uh, then it would affect all of them. If we were to hover over it, you see we get these two circles, and we drag one of those to another node, it directly affects that node and only the string of nodes that it's connected to. Now, of course, this is the only thing we've got, so it's still doing the same thing. But if we had more, then that is good to know. OK, so first thing we need to do then is increase the size of this field um, and the feathering so that we don't get any particles at all inside of it. So let's go to field properties and increase the size. Let's try 500 both ways. That should fill the screen. OK, and what we can do now is adjust the feather. And you'll notice as soon as you do this, the particles start to get pushed away from the inside of that area. <clears throat> OK, so if we were then to decrease this so it fits on the screen again to say 300, 300. OK, what we can do then is increase the affected properties of this field. OK, uh, by increasing the position. And what this does is just push all of those particles outside of that area. So let's try something like a thousand. Nearly there. Try two. OK, 1,000 is as high as it'll go, uh, and that seems OK. But let's just uh, try adjusting a few other things. Pop the size down to zero there, and you can see that we've got a fairly solid um, sized circle in the middle with no particles inside this cutout effect. OK, so now we're going to need to decide which things we want to keyframe. So I'm just going to twirl down this layer, make sure that we start at the keyframe that we want. Now we're probably going to want to adjust the size of the um, field so let's keyframe size and size y we're going to want to probably adjust the position and size of the affected properties and we're probably going to want to also adjust the um the origin x y of the field as well so now we can hit u and bring up all of our possible keyframes that we might want to edit so let's start with this off screen then oh actually first thing i'll do is make these particles a yellow by going to particle color and pasting in my yellow. Uh, oops, sorry, that was on the size of the affected properties there, not on the particle itself. So let's go over to the particles and change the color there, like so. There we go, perfect. And now let's start editing so that these are off screen. Okay, so let's start by trying to increase the size of the field. Let's go for maybe 600, nearly. Let's do 800 or 700, let's try. Almost there. Let's do 750. You basically don't want to go too far um, outside of the frame because if it starts over here, whatever easing you apply to your animation will obviously um, start out way outside of the frame and probably not be the result that you expect. Um, OK, so let's move on maybe mm, two seconds. Let's see where the next beat in the music is. Let's have it match the disappearance of that triangle. I think that's good. So let's go into here and decrease the size X and Y to say 250. Let's go even further. Let's go 150. Perfect. All right, that seems good to me. Um, these are looking a little bit chunky, but you know, what? I think I might like it. Um, yeah, let's leave them as a little bit chunky. Um, so now we have an animation that goes from off screen. All the particles start to creep in. You can see because their life is still only two seconds, they do sort of pop and bubble at the edge of the screen, which is quite cool. All right, perfect. Let's ease those. Like so. So it comes in a bit faster and leaves a bit, uh, slows down as it comes in. So let's just wait for that to render and have a look. Uh, we are rendering on full. That is probably why it's going a bit slow. But let's see. OK, great. Let's have this spin over to here as this guitar starts. The ding. Let's have that 
push over to the top left of the screen and reveal something over there. OK, so we're going to need to edit the origin X, Y and possibly the position and size, depending on if any pop in uh, inside the circle as we move over. But let's see. So let's have it start off with. Maybe going over to there and let's push that origin X, Y. Uh, across the page. OK, so let's go back up to our particle uh, field here and then just pop it maybe here. See what that looks like. Maybe a touch further over. There we go. That's nice. Let's add some easing onto that. Easy, 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 easy. There we go. And let's have just as it starts to slow down, Let's have our little circle come back in. So let's grab the circle. We'll duplicate that. I'll just shift it a bit higher up. Like so. Push it over to here and change its position. So that it is roughly center in that hole once it stops moving. I think about there would be nice. OK, good. Um, so now it's sort of revealing this shape here as it gets to its largest, like so. And then on the beat, we'll have it dash across the screen. So let's see if we've done that right. Well, let's not do it on full. Let's do it on quarter so it renders quickly. OK, let's have it start whipping across the screen right about now. So origin X, Y. And then let's have it go over to maybe one second and let's have it come over to here. But when it gets over here, let's have it grow so that it starts to um, move back to its center shape here. OK, so when it gets here, Let's have it be a size that is maybe twice its size. So let's make sure that our keyframes, first of all, are locked off to the point where it stops here and create a new size and size Y. Let's move over to the last one, skipping here, and let's increase this to maybe 300. OK, good, good. Let's adjust this so that it whips over. It's already doing it. And then let's put in another second that brings it back to the middle of the page. Uh, 640 by 320. No, 340. No, 360. <laughs> there we go. You can see I rarely work in 720p. Um, and let's leave it like that for now. And then let's have it just jump out to nothingness. So size Y, size Z, uh, X. And then one, two, three. Mm, yeah, let's do it to three and let's increase this back up to its original values. OK, perfect. Let's see what that looks like. I'll render it in half and jump back in when we're done. OK, let's have a look. All right, seems good to me. Let's make that a bit quicker at the end. Let's throw in a triangle as it grows here like so. So duplicate that one. Shift that over. Pop it in roughly the center there like that. Let's have it grow a bit earlier. All right, sounds good to me. I think what's up next is just one last particle effect, uh, which is the growing spin of particles here as it gets back to the middle, which is quite cool to do. So let's just jump into that. Um, as it comes back, let's line it up with the music a little bit. Let's have it go with the doodly 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 there on the music. OK, so. Let's close those off and create a new solid and we'll call this spin at the end there. And let's go to Stardust. And let's go into our replica here and we're going to go back to our old familiar circular, hit replace and bring that into the scene. 
Um, but the first thing we can do now is go down and change the shape of these to a rectangle. And this makes them nice and beefy. Uh, we're also going to increase the size a little bit. Let's have the size pixels be maybe five. See what that looks like. And the size Y be 15. Maybe make those 10 rather than five. That looks quite good. Um, and we're going to increase the speed a little bit if we can. Just so they're a bit larger. Maybe not that much. Maybe to 150. Okay, perfect. Once again, we're going to go down to our emitter position and remove the expression so that it's dead center. And this time we're going to go down to our particle colors and choose uh, gradient over life. Okay, so that is um, down by particle properties color here. Rather than random from gradient, we're going to do color over life. We're going to go to our color gradient, ditch all of this nonsense here, and turn these into our tip tuck colors. So that one's going to be sunflower. And this one is going to be carrot again. Like so. Okay, maybe that'll look better as random from gradient instead. Yeah, I think so. And let's increase the opacity random a little bit so that it's sometimes a bit see-through. And let's pop it underneath our cutout layer. Okie dokie. Um, we want this to start at a certain time. So we want it to start around about here, just as it starts to get pushed through. So that's probably good like that. Ah! And from about here, we want the particles to stop emitting. So what we could actually do, rather than reducing the speed, is we could try changing the emitting from default to once, okay? Um, and what that does is it just pulses the particles once. Doesn't look like that's gonna be quite enough with only our particles per second low. So let's just actually adjust those back down, okay? So wait until about there. And let's put a keyframe in for particles uh, per second. Move over just a little bit and reduce that to zero. Maybe a touch earlier than that. Okay, perfect. And I'm just going to drag my original footage here underneath. Going to transform the audio way down to nothing. And just start to push that in behind, like so. Uh, and this is just my animated logo that you see at the beginning. So I'm just going to increase that. And let's see what we've got overall. Okay, not too bad. Um, so as you can see, it really is quite simple to um, create, sorry, just cutting off the uh, composition there, to create um, pretty complicated motion graphics with a particle engine, which I didn't honestly think was possible, but uh, it's got some pretty impressive results. Obviously, the more you play around with something like this, the easier it is to understand, the better stuff you can produce from it. Uh, I'm still relatively new to it myself, but I do know for a fact that I'll be exploring this much, much further. So, I mean, let me know what you create with this. If you do create anything with um, Stardust, pop me a video, send it over on the discord comment below um with a link to it you know i'd love to see this because i've never really seen anything like it before and i'd like to see what you guys can do with it so thanks very much for watching everybody um i will just say make sure you do pop over to ascripts.com and pick up a copy of stardust it's really cool um and you'll have a lot of fun with it especially if you like doing motion graphics kind of things so thanks very much for watching everybody and i will see you all next time for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.